welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we share black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. John W. Hunter, recognized for his invention of the portable weighing scale. John W. Hunter of Iola invented what we think of as the hanging weight scale, also called spring scales. His device was portable and enabled the weighing of items where no flat, stable surface is available. These suspended scales hang from an overhead anchor point and have a hook to hold objects when determining weight. Today, they are used to weigh packages, luggage, fish and game, agricultural feed, and other items. Mechanical hanging scales feature dial or straight vertical numeric readouts. Digital hanging scales feature LCD displays. Marjorie Stewart Joyner, recognized for the invention of the permanent wave machine. Marjorie Stewart Joyner moved to Chicago in 1912, and shortly thereafter, she began studying cosmetology. In 1916, she became the first African-American graduate of Chicago's A.B. Moeller Beauty School. At the age of 20, she married and opened her salon. In Chicago, Joyner met her another well-known and influential beautician and businesswoman, Madam C.J. Walker, who had invented the Walker hair care system and opened beauty schools around the country. Joyner would join the Walker Company as national supervisor, overseeing over 200 salons. She would also hold many other important positions and would even serve on the board of directors while enjoying a full and rewarding career. A few years later, Joyner came up with a groundbreaking device of her own, the permanent wave machine. At the time, African-American women were accustomed to straightening their hair using very hot curling irons. The process was very slow and uncomfortable because only one iron would be used at a time. The idea came to her while she was making a pot roast in her kitchen one afternoon. She envisioned a similar system that would use several rods hung above a client's head to roll several sections of her hair at once. Then, they could be heated up to cook a permanent wave or curl into her hair. A hairstyle like this she knew would hold for at least a few days. In 1926, she began experimenting with actual pot roast rods and an old-fashioned air dryer hood. Soon thereafter, she patented her invention in 1928 as well as a scalp protector to make the procedure more comfortable. Though Marjorie Joyner was often honored for her invention, she never derived substantial income from it, as with many other black inventors. Joyner was an employee of Madam C.J. Walker's company at the time. The permanent waving machine was created and patented and therefore ownership of the patent was assigned to the Walker Company. Peyton Johnson, recognized for improvements to the rocking and reclining chair. Peyton Johnson of Ohio made new and useful improvements to the swinging chair and convertible chairs. His version had two positions. In the upright position, the chair could serve as a rocking chair, but the chair also had the ability to adjust in a fully reclined position where it could be locked into place. The frames were of wood, with upholsters cushions for back and seat. Johnson's invention was an early version of what we call a lazy boy. Easy chair or recliner fused with a rocking chair. Recliners are about as synonymous with American leisure time as baseball and TV dinners. In fact, almost every living room in America has a well-worn, overstuffed reclining chair waiting patiently by the television. In the postmodern era, we've seen recliners evolve from large, cushy solo sofas into sleek, and attractive recliners or theater seating featuring power reclining, power headrests, heat massaging, attachments for tables, cup holders, storage compartments, electric lights, and USB charging ports. Lloyd Ray, recognized for improvements to the dustpan. African-American inventor Lloyd Ray was able to think outside the box and come up with a new and useful way to improve upon the dustpan. The object of his invention was to provide a dustpan which would be so constructed as to lie close to the floor or surface from which the dust is to be taken up. The receiving edge of the pan was of a stronger material than the body portion, making it more durable and easier to sweep dirt into the pan. The most important aspect of Ray's design was that it solved two problems. The long handle made it a lot cleaner and simpler to sweep up trash and dirt. There was no need to bend down to hold the dustpan. Unlike the original types of dustpans, Ray's industrial version added a handle made out of wood and a steel collection plate of metal that served as the dustpan. He also added a spring fastening device which would permit the collection plate to be carried in a vertical position. 
as a means for suspending the pan or plate from a convenient support. The collection box meant that debris could be scooped up and stored without the need of dumping the trash from the dustpan every few minutes. Ray's dustpan received a patent in 1897 and was just the 165th patent to be issued in the United States. George T. Sampson, recognized for improvements to the clothes dryer. In 1892, George T. Sampson developed and patented improvements that would pave the way for automatic clothes dryer. Like many other entrepreneurs, Sampson did not invent the item that made his reputation. Automatic dryers of sorts had been used for the better part of the 19th century. It usually was some method of speeding the drying over an open flame. People complained that this made their clothes smell of smoke and stained them with soot. Samson refined the process with a series of suspension rods over a specially designed stove. The object of his invention was to suspend clothing in close relation to a stove by means of frames so constructed that they can be readily placed in proper position and easily disassembled. With this new development, those doing laundry could have a happy medium of drying their clothes quicker no matter the weather and without having to worry about setting garments on fire. This design was used until the growth and use of gas and electric dryers in the late 1930s and early 1940s. Mary Van Britten Brown, recognized for invention of the home security system. Before security systems became a fixture in homes, an African-American nurse, Mary Van Britten Brown, devised an early security unit for her own home. She spent many nights at home alone in Queens, New York, while her husband was away and felt unsafe with high rates of crime in her neighborhood. On top of that, police were unreliable and unresponsive, so she created a device in 1966 that would help put her mind at ease. Brown's invention used a camera that could slide into and look through four peepholes in her front door. The camera's view would then appear on a monitor in her home so she could survey any potentially unwanted guests. She added other features to the system, including a microphone to speak to anyone at the door, a button to unlock the door, and a button to contact the police. She and her husband took out a patent for the system in the same year, and they were awarded the patent three years later in 1969. Patricia Bath, recognized for the invention of the laser FACO probe. Bath coined the term laser FACO for the process and developed the laser FACO probe, a medical device that improves on the use of lasers to remove cataracts and for ablating and removing cataract lenses. The device was completed in 1986 after Bath conducted research on lasers in Berlin and patent in 1988, making her the first African-American woman to receive a patent for a medical purpose. The device, which quickly and nearly painlessly dissolves the cataract with a laser, irrigates and cleans the eye and permits the easy insertion of a new lens, is used internationally to treat the disease. Bath has continued to improve the device and has successfully restored vision to people who have been unable to see for decades. Bath holds five patents in the United States. Three of Bath's five patents relate to the laser FACO probe. In 2000, she was granted a patent for a method for using post-ultrasound to remove cataracts, and in 2003, a patent for combining laser and ultrasound to remove cataracts. James E. West, recognized for invention of the foil electric microphone. 90% of microphones used today are based on the ingenuity of James Edward West, an African-American inventor who developed the microphone with a colleague, Gerhard Sessler. While with Bell Laboratories, they received a patent for it in 1964 after being tasked with creating a sensitive and compact microphone. Their acoustical technologies became widely used for many reasons, including high performance, acoustical accuracy, and reliability. Microphones are widely used today in the music industry as well as in phones and cameras. Dr. West holds 47 U.S. patents and more than 200 foreign patents from his 40-year career with Bell Laboratories. Thomas L. Jennings, recognized for the invention of the dry scoring process. Thomas L. Jennings was the first black man to receive a patent. The patent was awarded in 1821 for his discovery of a process called dry scoring, which was the forerunner of today's modern dry cleaning. In his early 20s, Jennings became a tailor, but then opened a dry cleaning business in New York City. While running his business, Jennings developed dry scoring. A free man, Jennings was able to gain exclusive rights to his invention and profit from it. 
Jennings was a passionate abolitionist who used the income from his invention to free the rest of his family from slavery and fund abolitionist causes. Alexander Miles, recognized for the invention of the automatic elevator doors. Alexander Miles designed the mechanism for automatically opening and closing elevator doors, preventing dangerous accidents on the elevator. Prior to his invention, riders risked a potentially fatal fall down the elevator shaft. Miles began exploring his passion for inventing by creating hair care products while working as a barber. One day at work in a four-story building, he noticed the elevator doors were left open. He became concerned and was already aware of reported incidents of people falling into the shafts because people would forget to close the elevator doors. Miles' innovation, which was patented in 1887, was an electric-powered door that would close the doors automatically and simultaneously.